In part one, Superjet 2245 received its IFR clearance and taxi to the runway for takeoff. In part two, it departed from Academy Airport and completed the en route phase of flight. Now let's watch as the pilots complete the final two phases of flight. Superjet 2245 is now entering phase four of its flight, the descent and approach phase. At this point, the pilots continue following the star. Per the procedure, once they arrive at the Farmington Vortac, they'll be vectored to their final approach in Minneapolis. They're now talking to Minneapolis Approach, who will guide them through the approach phase of flight. Minneapolis Approach, Superjet 2245, auto 15,500 for 11,000 with Mike. Superjet 2245, Minneapolis Approach. Expect vectors, ILS runway 30 left approach. Expect radar vectors for ILS 30 left. Superjet 2245. Superjet 2245, turn right heading 120, vector to final approach course. Descend and maintain 6000. Right to uh, 120 and down to 6000 for Superjet 2245. The approach controller is sequencing Superjet with her other traffic. This involves vectoring the aircraft in order to put it in line with other traffic and then turning it in preparation for an ILS approach clearance. ILS means instrument landing system and it guides the pilots to the runway in reduced visibility conditions by means of radio signals that provide both vertical and lateral guidance. As they descend, the pilots start on their before landing checks. One zero thousand for check. See belt sign coming back on. Captain, I'm going to PA, you've got the radios. Got the radios. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain, turn the seatbelt sign back on. Please remain seated for the remainder of the trip. Flight attendants, prepare for arrival. As they near the airport, the pilots will begin configuring the aircraft for landing. Flap seat, please. Flap seat. Seven thousand for six thousand. Superjet twenty two forty five, turn left heading zero six zero. Left zero six zero, Superjet twenty two forty five. The controller is putting Superjet on a course almost perpendicular to the runway heading. In order to maintain the minimum separation of three miles on final, controllers must build in additional spacing to compensate for speed compression and this process sometimes begins before aircraft actually turn on to final. In this case, Superjet has been turned to a heading of 060 instead of the normal base turn to 030 to gain additional spacing. As aircraft approach the runway, they have to slow for landing. Speed compression refers to the tendency to lose spacing between a line of aircraft on final because the lead aircraft will begin slowing down sooner than the trailing aircraft. Controllers have to build in additional spacing in order to maintain appropriate separation minimums, or else aircraft would bunch up on final and separation would be lost. Superjet 2245, 1-8 miles from Narco, turn left heading 330, maintain 6000 until established on the localizer, cleared ILS runway 30 left approach. Uh, maintain 330 uh, 6000 until established, cleared for the ILS 30 left, Superjet 2245. Now that the pilots have received their approach clearance, they begin phase 5, the final phase of the flight. They're responsible for following the approach procedure on their own. ATC will not talk to them again until transferring them to the tower frequency. Their turn to heading 330 puts them on a heading to intercept the localizer, which provides lateral guidance to the runway, and as they approach the localizer, they will simply turn to follow it in. Once established on the localizer, the pilots will also intercept the glide slope, which is what provides vertical guidance to the runway. The approach procedure provides instructions on how to fly the approach, 
distances to the runway from various points on the approach, and minimum altitudes at those different points. They'll be transferred to the tower once established on their approach, and the tower will give them final clearance for landing. Glide swaps alive. Localizer yeah, alive. Localizer one alive. Localizer two alive. Gear down, flaps 30, four line check to the line. Gear down, flaps 30. Gear is down, flaps are 30, flight attendant is advised, switch reverse your arm, passenger signs are on, four line check to line complete. This is the most critical phase of Superjet's flight and the time of highest workload and stress in the cockpit. The aircraft is established on final and configured for landing, which means it will be slowing down from now until touchdown. It takes several seconds for jet engines to spool up, and with gear and flaps lowered, it will take Superjet precious seconds to speed up in the event of an emergency or if the pilots cannot complete the approach. Aircraft that are slowing for landing also become much less maneuverable. ATC's job is to maintain adequate spacing between aircraft on final and on the runway, and to keep pilots advised of what's going on around them, especially in this case when Superjet is still in the clouds and pilots can't see anything. Superjet 2245, contact Minneapolis Tower, 126.7. 126.7, Superjet 2245. Minneapolis Tower, Superjet 2245, inbound ILS 30 left. Superjet 2245, Minneapolis Tower, continue. Roger, uh, Superjet uh, 2245. Flaps 45, set me ref, flaps 45 plus 5. Flaps 45. The approach controller is responsible for maintaining at least three miles of separation between Superjet and her other traffic until Superjet crosses the runway threshold, even after she has transferred it to Minneapolis Tower. The tower controller's job is to ensure that adequate spacing will exist on the runway when Superjet crosses the landing threshold, and to provide traffic calls if necessary as he works aircraft that are landing and departing before Superjet's arrival. Delta 475, runway 30 left, position and hold. Position and hold, 30 left, Delta 475. Delta 475, runway 30 left, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 30 left, Delta 475. Superjet 2245, runway 30 left, clear to land. Traffic is going 737, departing runway 30 left. Superjet uh, 2245, clear to land, 30 left. Altimeters and instruments cross-checked. Runway in sight, 12 o'clock. Landing. Got that uh, Boeing. Once the pilots come out of the clouds and have the runway in sight, they'll fly the rest of the approach visually, using instruments as a reference. 500. No flags, gear check down, clear to land. Under feet to minimums.
while it's green. Eighty nuts. Superjet twenty two forty five. Turn right next taxiway. Contact ground point niner. Good day. Right next taxiway uh, point niner. Superjet twenty two forty five. Minneapolis ground, Superjet uh, 2245 clearing, 30 left going to Gulf 14. Superjet 2245 Minneapolis ground, turn right on Bravo, taxi to the terminal. Taxi to the gate, right turn on Bravo, Superjet uh, 2245. The pilots now taxi to their assigned gate and complete their after landing checklists. Once clear of the taxiway, the pilots follow directions from the ground crew to line up with their parking spot. Then they'll shut down the engines and the flight is over. After lane check complete. Thank you. Shocks and brakes. In secure. Electrics. Shots one, two, coming off. Fuel pumps. Off. Thrust levers. Shut off. Seat belts. And ice. is off. Hydraulic pump 3A. We'll leave it on. Beacon. Off. Nose wheel steering. Off. Shut down, shut complete. So that is a pretty typical flight from start to finish. During each phase of flight, air traffic control's primary job is to keep aircraft separated and to move them as quickly and efficiently as possible to their destination. As you saw, the most complex phases of flight were the takeoff, departure, descent, approach, and arrival phases. During those times, the pilots are busiest flying and configuring the aircraft, and ATC is busiest controlling traffic in the areas on and around airports. When is the workload greatest for pilots? A, during takeoff. B, during departure and climb out. C, during the instrument approach. Or D, during the en route portion of the flight. The answer is C. Pilots are busiest during the instrument approach. What is speed compression? A. The point where an aircraft slows for landing. B. The loss of spacing when the lead aircraft on final slows before the trailing aircraft. C. The gain in spacing on final when the lead aircraft slows before the trailing aircraft. Or D. The point when an aircraft speeds up after departing. The answer is B, the loss of spacing when the lead aircraft on final slows before the trailing aircraft. Hopefully this episode has given you an idea of how the air traffic control system works, what roles ATC plays in each phase of flight, and how controllers interact with pilots. Be sure to check out other episodes of ATCast for more in-depth coverage on some of the topics you saw in this episode. On behalf of UND Air Traffic Control, the Student Air Traffic Controllers Association, and the Aerospace Network, my name is Dan Lindsay. Thanks for watching. Learn more about UND Air Traffic Control and watch more episodes of ATCAST by logging on to www.undsatka.org. Students may interactively test their knowledge by taking the ATCAST quizzes on SATCA's Easy LMS page. ATCast can also be downloaded for free to your portable media device. Just search for ATCast on iTunes U.